This debate begins and ends with really a very simple proposition, and it's this, that whatever else we mess up in the conduct of international relations, in responding to deadly conflict, in responding to human rights violations, for God's sake, let's not mess up again as an international community our response to mass atrocity crimes, to genocide, ethnic cleansing, other major crimes against humanity and war crimes. Let's get to the point as an international community that when another man-made humanitarian crisis catastrophe like Cambodia or Rwanda or Bosnia or Darfur looms on the horizon as it surely will again, we'll never again have to look back after yet another disastrous failure asking ourselves with a mixture of anger and incomprehension and shame how we could possibly have let this happen again. But how do we make that happen? The responsibility to end man-made humanitarian crises that Mia and I are arguing for tonight doesn't mean, does not mean that for every problem of this kind the answer is to send in the Marines. Coercive military force is a blunt and extreme instrument and should only be used in the most extreme and exceptional circumstances. As I'm sure Rick Hillier would agree, professional soldiers usually do. It's the civilians that tend to be a little bit more gung-ho about this, but I guess John Bolton can speak for himself. The trouble is that most of the debate, the trouble is that most of the debate on these issues, the whole controversy about humanitarian intervention that we can all remember from the 1990s, has been conducted as if the extreme military option was the only one. Send in the Marines or do nothing at all. There are, of course, cases where a rapid and forceful coercive military intervention will be the only option. Romeo Dallaire was dead right about that, of course, in Rwanda in 1994. Srebrenica, a year later, in Bosnia, was another case when the failure to resist militarily was catastrophic. Kosovo in 1999 was another case which, although more controversial, was one, I think, that the military, where the military intervention was absolutely necessary in practice and thoroughly justified, if not legally, then certainly morally. But there are plenty of other cases who, where coercive military force, in the sense, that is, of mounting a full-scale military invasion as distinct from a consensual peacekeeping operations, is just not the right answer if only because to do so would cause considerably more harm than good. It hurts a little bit to rule out any option at all in the case of the particular countries that we're dealing with in this debate tonight, Sudan, Zimbabwe, Burma, because we're still deeply conscious, of course, of how unresolved the crises in each of these countries are and how much appalling human misery continues to be suffered, but at least in present circumstances, I think we do have to rule out the coercive military force option for reasons which we can debate later in detail in each case. That doesn't mean, however, that the alternative is to do nothing. There are a whole range of responses from the supportive to the persuasive to the coercive, using a whole toolbox, toolbox full of measures from the diplomatic and the economic and the legal through to the military which can and should be used by the international community to prevent such atrocity crimes occurring in the first place, to react to them when they do, and to rebuild societies that are shattered by crisis to ensure that the underlying causes are addressed and never happen again. This is, of course, the approach which is at the heart of the concept of the responsibility to protect, which Canada played such a huge part in persuading the international community to embrace unanimously at the 2005 World Summit. It's a much more multi-layered and nuanced concept than the one-dimensional military-focused battle cry of humanitarian intervention. And it's shown already that it's much more capable, I think, than any previous approach of generating the kind of global reflex consensus response we need if we are going to respond effectively to these catastrophic atrocity crime situations.